Math was one of my favorites, if not my favorite subject in school throughout. I'll never forget taking pre-algebra in sixth grade and my mind being blown away by the concept of negative numbers. How frustrating it was for me at first until I determined to understand it. The higher level math classes all the way through calculus. When I went to college, there was no math requirement, which I found incredibly disappointing. And as a music education major, I had no time in my schedule to take a math class just for fun. Out of all the math classes I took, trigonometry was my absolute favorite. I took it in my junior year of high school, and from the moment I knew what it was all about, I was hooked. I had been given an introduction to proofs in geometry class, but trigonometry is really where I found my momentum. I didn't understand it at the time. What was so intriguing to me about proving an identity? For those who don't know, and this is just the bare basics, in trigonometry you are given identities to prove. You are given an equation in which two sides equal each other. Your task is to prove that both sides do indeed equal one another. It's a way of thinking in which you are provided a true statement, but you must prove why it is true. In a way, it's kind of like working backwards. You start with the truth and then find reasons to prove it. I didn't understand at the time why my 16-year-old self identified with that math class so strongly, why it was so ultimately satisfying to get to the end, having proved the equation accurately and correctly. It wasn't until later, when I began to understand my own thought process, that I could see why. I was able to observe my own thought process in that class. That class made complete sense to me because it actually showed me how my mind worked. In real life, when considering a problem or thinking about an idea, I almost immediately have a feeling about it. It's a truth or a conclusion. I can express it if I choose, but I usually choose not to because it's just a statement. It cannot be proved. However, I know it to be true. Just like the trigonometric equation, it is there on paper, a truth waiting to be proven. And when I prove it, it is even more satisfying than what I, ex what I experienced in high school because not only have I done the work to prove them, I have written the equations as well. I have found that sometimes the proving happens quite rapidly. I may express a statement and almost immediately my mind starts working backwards to prove it. I can write about it or even attempt to express it out loud and sometimes within a short space of time I've created all the steps that prove my equation. Other times the process can take weeks, months, sometimes even years. The truths or conclusions can be all across the board. Sometimes they are truths about people or a particular situation involving people. Sometimes I have a strong affinity for an object or something in nature. There is a reason for this affinity, a very strong reason, but I must prove why. Sometimes my statements cannot be proven, but this is good as failure gives one a reason to sharpen abilities even more. I found this incredibly interesting quote on a trigonometry website. The trick to proving trig identities is intuition which can only be gained through experience. The more basic formulas you have memorized, the faster you will be. The following identities are essential to all your work with trig functions. Make a point of memorizing them. Once both sides are exactly equal or obviously equal, you have proven your identity. This is the INFJ thought process and experience in a nutshell. You get better at proving your statements with the more experience you have. The basic formulas? This is people study, people experience. The more you study people and the more intensely you do it, the faster you are in being able to express your proof and being able to express why you stated the equation. In essence, we do memorize people. We memorize their patterns and behaviors, how they say what they say, their expressions, their ways of being. It's all stored in our minds, and when we need it to come together to prove something about a person or a situation, it is there for us so we can begin writing the proof. The intuition is there from the beginning. It's what drives us to do the study in the first place. 
but experiences must be had in order to know how to properly use that intuition or to use it in a way which can make it ultimately useful. And so, my dear INFJ, have you had your identity questioned? Ask yourself, do you think in this way? Your thought process is the stated equation. It might be on paper, this is how you think. Then, by using your mind in this way, by thinking in this back-to-front kind of way, you can prove the equation to be true. And in doing so, you prove your identity as an introverted, intuitive dominant. And to show you how my mind works in this way, I'd like to share something personal with you, so perhaps you can see for yourself how this process works. It's more of a fanciful, highly imaginative example, so if you're interested, continue on to the part two video. 